Hello, my name is Tiaren Gruber and I use she, her pronouns. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the Level Up Symposium presented by the Associated Designers of Canada with support from Toaster Lab's Mixed Reality Performance Atelier. I am a member of the Board of Directors of the ADC and really excited to be your host for this, our final uh, streamed event. To begin our session today, I would like to acknowledge that I am currently located on Treaty 6 territory, the traditional lands of First Nations and Métis people. Edmonton, as it is known colonially, is and has been home to a diverse range of Indigenous nations and peoples, including the Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakota Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, Ojibwe, Soto, Anishinaabe, Sutsina, Inuit, and many others. Since time immemorial, this land has been a meeting place for this diverse range of Indigenous peoples who have enriched this place with their histories, languages, and cultures. And as a settler, I have benefited from Indigenous generosity, hospitality, and knowledge. And for that, I wish to express my deep gratitude. In this spirit of gratitude, I would also like to acknowledge the support of the Canada Council for the Arts, our primary funder of this symposium as a whole, as well as our dedicated member volunteers and volunteers on the board of the ADC who have made this symposium possible. Thank you so much for your care and your time uh, bringing this symposium to our attendees. We're equally grateful to our additional sponsors, IATSE, University of British Columbia, CITT Alberta Chapter, Theater Alberta, Concordia University, Ryerson University, and York University. For your information, all symposium events will be recorded and are presented in a freely available archive. Check back in a few days after any of the events you've missed to see the recording at levelup.designers.ca. And in a few days time, uh, the full uh, compendium of all our events will be available online. And, uh, and, and as soon as possible after that, the final summation events of some of our uh, um, uh, design experiments will also become available. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're watching this Level Up live stream either on the Level Up website, levelup.designers.ca, on HowlRound at HowlRound.com through our partners at Toaster Lab, or on the respective Facebook pages for the ADC or Toaster Lab. Regardless of your viewing platform embedded on the same page as the video is the chat function. It's right here in the top right-hand corner of your screen. There's an icon there. Um, questions can be asked by um, clicking on this icon and typing them into the chat at any time, and they'll be read out um, during the session as we go through. If you have any technical difficulties at any point in the session, please send an email to levelup at designers.ca for immediate support. This event can be enjoyed through auditory or visual access or a combination of both. I will read aloud all questions or comments we address from the chat and this information will also appear visually at the bottom of your stream. Uh, visual access is also supported with live captioning for myself and the other presenters right here at the bottom of my stream window. If you require technical assistance to support your access, please email levelup at designers.ca for immediate support or provide much valued feedback following our events. Thank you. If you enjoy this session and or any of the other sessions you've attended throughout the symposium, I hope you'll consider donating any amount to the Associated Designers of Canada. This helps support our National Arts Service Organization achieve, it, achieve its goals in the areas of advocacy, mentorship, and industry promotion. Donation links are available in screen on all viewing platforms and will also be posted um, up in the chat. Thank you so much for your patience with our announcements. Uh, this is the last time I will do these announcements and this is our last formal event. Um, tonight we have a social event happening, um, which we call the Drinks with Designers. This is a, a nationwide event that's been ongoing in real life for the last number of years. And um, during the uh, course of the symposium, we've been doing them as virtual meetups online for everyone's safety. Um, so please consider registering and attending that event this evening. Um, that will be the final event, but this is our last of the sort of formal streamed um, uh, presentations which we'll be making as part of the symposium. So we are calling it our closing ceremonies and it'll be featuring uh, specifically the curatorial team of the Level Up Symposium, which includes Emily, Susanna, Andrew Scriber, and myself. So uh, welcome Emily and Andrew from behind the scenes. Uh, Andrew, you know, who's been a host at many of our events, but um, Emily, you may be seeing for the first time, uh, she presented a number, I should say they presented a number of wonderful uh, projects of their own and workshops. Um, but this is the first time in a stream that we're seeing Emily both as technician behind the scenes and, uh, and as curator in front of the scenes. So thank you both Andrew and Emily for joining me. I really appreciate it. Welcome. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, it's we great to it. be here. Though I just got an email from someone that one of our URLs was not quite right. So I'm actually dealing with that right now. Um, okay, great. So Emily's <laughs> going to duck out yeah. and be our tech support. Thank you. And uh, Andrew and I will uh, get things started. 
Mm -hmm. So we prepared a small slideshow um, where we're going to share with you some of the things that we that brought us to this symposium in the first place, why it why it came to be, and um, also a little bit of the outcomes as we've been able to record them so far. Um, we're going to continue to learn about the outcomes as the symposium wraps up and we get feedback from the community members uh, who attended and the artists who participated. Um, but to date, we've had uh, some success and we're happy to be able to share it with everyone who's joined us today. Andrew, did you want to share a few words about what drew you to Level Up and what eventually became Level Up, I guess we should say, and what got you interested in participating way back in the grant writing days last summer in the June oh, of 2020? So long ago, so long ago. Um, <laughs> uh, a whole a lifetime. Um, I mean, I've, I was always just very excited about the idea of uh, bringing together like-minded and non-like-minded people to to talk about something that I've been excited about for for eight years, nine years, however long I've been doing uh, digital digital creation, technical video design, and all this fun theater stuff. Um, I was very happy to. I was very excited about the idea of just um, bringing voices in from all around the world, uh, around the world, but around Canada. And you know, when we started talking about bringing people from different countries, I was I was like, wow, let's make this an international event. Let's try to bring in as much uh, as many ideas as we can and um yeah and i think i think the thing that i was most excited about right from the get-go was the our experiments mm -hmm. and this idea of uh just giving people the space and the time and uh, a little bit of money in order to just be here and be present for for a number of hours with other creators that they've probably never worked with and just to see what they can actually accomplish in that amount of time. And I think that that was always my my touchstone as far as uh, excitement uh, for the for the whole project. But in, then in once we got the money and we started planning the events together and I started to uh, meet some of the people that would be presenting, that those ideas, every, every conversation that I had was just super exciting. And every person that I spoke to had so many different ideas about how they could help the symposium be greater what they could bring to the table, uh, what they were working on. It was all just very exciting. So I think, yeah, I think just the, the people and the experiments and the ideas has always mm -hmm. been what it's always been about for me, so. Absolutely. How about you, Emily? What did you want to share about your experience as yeah. a co-curator? I mean, like for for me, I've always been very interested in in education and the ability to to share knowledge and make things open source, make them freely available. Um, and it's one of the things I think as a team we were really passionate about, like not putting a paywall in front of any of our events, keeping the archive up, um, and something that the community has really responded well to in terms of being able to go back and access material if they weren't able to make it the first time because a lot of a lot of times with these these symposiums or these events um you know you see it come up on your feed and you're like oh that seems interesting maybe i'll get to that and a show comes up or life gets in the way whatever so being able to go back and and look at all these all these items uh, and and still use all these resources, I think was really important and exciting. Um, creating a place where um, also through the website where you can just go to like one URL and then you have access to all these different talks by so many fantastic people. Um, I'm very, very proud of the lineup that uh, that we were able to achieve, which is really just, you know, a statement of the generosity of the artists that we approached. Everyone was always like, yeah, I'd love to do it. Like, here's, here's an option. Here's a topic. Here's a panel. Um, because like when we started out planning, we had, you know, panels that we wanted to do and sort of this rough outline. And then as we would talk, like we were, the three of us were talking almost every day. Um, and, you know, we'd get on Zoom at the end of the day and be like, okay, so I know we approached this person about this panel, but they also pitched, like, these other three ideas. So, like, do we have space for these other three ideas? And we'd move around the schedule um, because everyone has come with such a wealth of knowledge and, and such great um, options that that's been very exciting. It's been really thrilling. And I, I know for my part that in the beginning of the pandemic, I was hearing, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to be working with Michelle Ramsey on a number of workshop series that ADC was presenting. And that was before we had written grants, before we had received any funding from Canada Council and was purely on the basis of volunteering. So other designers volunteering their time to share a workshop to help other designers 
get up on our feet, have something to do at home, keep our minds sharp, keep our care, keep our creativity flowing. And that real spirit of generosity of the you know ADC members supporting one another is what really um, sparked for me this idea that we could do a bigger project like this and that there was interest both on the attendee side and the presenter side to share in this time and that people were really looking for that kind of connection. And so I began um, collaborating with a lot of people on the board of the ADC as well as the grant officers at the Canada Council about how we could go about creating something um, that would have a real impact. And it, for me, it kept coming back to this idea of many people I was talking to thinking, you know, having this attitude that, well, everything I know or everything I, I have access to isn't useful, that I don't know how to use this digital stuff, that digital isn't for me, um, that we don't do this in theater, this is not what theater is about. Um, and I kept thinking, every time I heard someone say something like that, I thought, I don't think that's true. You know, I've been working in the digital sort of adjacent or, or kind of touching my toe into digital stuff throughout my whole career, the last 10 years. And I've worked with incredibly wise and wonderful artists who dedicated their, themselves for, you know, 10, 20, 30 years to advancement of tools and integrating things from a dramaturgical perspective and a technological perspective into live work. And every time I heard someone say they felt like they didn't have access to that uh, or that it didn't even exist in their mind, I really felt like a desire to push against that and say, listen, we have wise people in our community with tons of access, tons of information, tons of tools and tons of wisdom. And I want to bring those people together with, um, you know, with those who maybe lost their confidence a little bit in how live theater could be presented in this current situation. So people like, you know, our team at Toaster Lab who've been, you know, disseminating information like this in other symposia before, before COVID ever hit, um, who already had values around making this stuff available to our theater community Community. And then many of the presenters um, who we were able to then recruit were people who'd been mentors to me or whose work I had admired or who I had the chance to talk to either at Prague Quadrennial or at the Banff Center when they've done workshops in the past. So wanting to bring together almost like a, a cheat sheet or a, or a um, you know, a hack so that people could kind of really quickly get access to that pool of knowledge and also to the community because I know that I was really shocked and surprised when I began working in the digital milieu how much support there was out there and it didn't look like the support I was used to I couldn't you know phone them on the phone or you know go to my teacher in their office and have a conversation in person but all of a sudden and through these weird forums I never had any experience with before through emailing strangers and through all these kind of strange methods online I was able to get access to a huge community and I and I felt embraced by that community to really explore my creativity. And so I wanted to bring that spirit of um, mutual support and creativity that the digital forum provides to people uh, who have access to it and, and sort of open that door, throw the door open for theater artists who maybe don't feel like they have access to that or didn't know it existed. Um, and so I think that that, you know, now you've heard a little bit from all three of us about the values we brought into this symposium. And maybe we can go ahead and um, share that slideshow and we'll just go through a little bit of the thank yous that are owed and very well deserved and uh, some of the outcomes we've achieved. Yeah, and uh, just before we do, I just wanted to throw in, um, in addition to Toaster Lab, HowlRound and the whole ethos yeah. in which they uh, they promote uh, events and, and create work. And uh, in the interest of uh, something that we've been saying a lot through the symposium, which is you can only tell if things are live either via interactivity or failure, uh, my cat has just uh, budged my green screen. So as we throw <laughs> this up, I'm going to uh, disappear for a second, fix that. <laughs> Jeff's kiss. <laughs> Um, all right, so here we are at our Level Up 2021 closing ceremonies. Um, it's been a huge marathon. Emily and Andrew have been incredible. Uh, their dedication and amount of um, care and attention they've given to this symposium since uh, mid-November when we mm -hmm. uh, sort of launched ourselves in earnest is uh, absolutely incredible. So thank you to both of them. And thank you here to the valued teams uh, listed here who made this symposium possible. Um, I listed there my co-curators, but especially Toaster Lab's Mixed Reality Performance Atelier um, with support from Logan Crack now. We're really grateful to them and they're going to have a big um, uh, influence. They've had a huge influence uh, in forming the symposium and supporting the grant from the very beginning, and um, and they've also been been going to be a big support in our archive work as well. Um, we've had incredible amount of response 
both from the public around the world, across Canada, and that is in large part due to our ADC Social Media Committee. Megan Koshka, Scott Penner, and Ksenia Broda-Million have really gone above and beyond. They worked really hard to get the symposium out there and make sure that no stone was unturned, make sure that anyone who felt like they wanted access to this information knew that it was available to them for free. Um, so a big thank you to, to the ADC Social Media Committee and the ADC Symposium Development Team, which includes our president of the ADC, Ken McKenzie, uh, Michelle Cutler, Ian Garrett, and Simon Rossiter. Um, these board members uh, and executive board members were really essential in um, connecting with people who eventually became sponsors, in getting the word out to organizations and individuals across the country who would benefit, and, um, and in also just giving, um, you know, giving me a lot of ideas and support in the beginning around the grant writing to make this whole thing happen from the very start. So thank you to them. And finally, we couldn't do it without our technical team, um, Patrick, Peachy Higdon and Emily Susanna behind the scenes on nearly every event. And of course, Andrew Scriber um, taking over when Emily or uh, <laughs> Patrick needed a little bit of a moment to breathe. Yeah. Um, we did end up having what we've been calling our symposium marathon. The original proposal for this event way back a thousand years ago was to do um, uh, one week of events. But we thought to ourselves, you know, screen time is a lot for people and it's challenging to do, you know, 10 or 12 events in a single week. We don't want people to be tired. Let's spread it out over more time. So we decided, okay, we'll do 12 events uh, over four weeks. Um, and in the end, you'll see when we get to the symposium in numbers that we did uh, that upwards happen. of 40 events. Um, so this really has been a marathon and our technical yeah. team has offered uh, a lot of themselves to make that possible. So thank you I, so much just, to all the teams listed here. Yeah, I just have to I just have to jump in because because the uh, not knowing, you know, that thing of where you're building a uh, you're working on a project and you don't know that it's real until there's like something one particular event that actually happens that it didn't feel real for me until uh i think in our first week or right right before our first week i got a targeted ad for our own event on facebook <laughs> and then i was like oh right <laughs> i didn't know that we were gonna oh yeah okay yeah now it's happening yeah it's, it's happening yeah, yeah, yeah. It, what Being it like happened. right there like sign it, up I'm like it's yeah, real I don't need to sign up um, yes, and watching those, and to everyone out there who's watching, you can't know how much it warms our hearts. Every single time someone registered, you know, mm -hmm. looking at the analytics mm -hmm. of the website yeah. traffic, this really buoyed our spirit. It really made us feel like um, what we were doing, that there was an audience out there who wanted it. And so, um, honestly, uh, we do have a big thank you to our attendees at the very end, but I can't help but thank them now before we get going too much. Yeah, especially whoever were the first few people who signed up back in like the infancy of the website and our our sign up page, because like every ticket that would come in, we'd be on WhatsApp and be like, another person signed up. Ha ah, ha! There's 15 people now. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously, over time, that snowballed, and we couldn't have a, a micro celebration for every uh, every ticket. But particularly at the start, it was it was very exciting. Yes, I believe Sean Kerwin, who's a Canadian designer and educator, uh, deserves a shout out in that yes, respect. Yes, a lot of early, a lot of early tickets. Yeah, um, thank you also to the Associate Designers Board of Directors and staff. Um, the Board of Directors at the ADC are all volunteers, and they devote a huge amount of their time and energy to the support of their peers and their community. And this year, uh, there was a, ma a, a major landmark. Um, uh, goal uh, met in uh, the ADC becoming uh, local ADC 659 with the IATSE and so uh, the amount that's happened in the past year to support our community and the amount of work the board of directors have been doing. Um, Michelle Ramsey I also have to mention again who um, was part of the very initial ideas before we ever even began um, thinking of this as a symposium and, and her spirit and um, you know creativity and and tenacity around supporting fellow designers really um, informed my work on this piece um, so anyways here we have our executive uh, Ken Kim and Simon who um, nothing happens at the ADC without their hard work and they put a lot of themselves into everything that goes on there and of course we could not have done this without um, Louise and Gail. Gail was really instrumental in us um, creating a successful grant and Louise Plunkett is uh, making sure that all the artists get um, get their invoices paid and that all of the um, questions and comments that come into the office are dealt with. So thank you so much to the executive and to the staff mm -hmm. and to all my fellow directors on the on the board who sat through listening to me um, in board meetings and really supported this project and were really, really um, caring in finding funders, um, giving up their time in meetings and, and making this happen. So thank you, a big thank you goes out to all of them. Great job team. Yeah.
Thank yeah. you, ADC. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, you so Thanks much. ADC. And in that note, the last time you're going to get this message from me in the chat, uh, please donate money to the ADC. The Canada Helps is now in the chat. Um, please. Absolutely. If you've, uh, if you're, if it's available to you and you enjoyed the symposium, I hope you'll take a few moments to make a donation to the ADC. Um, the creators and presenters of this event, without it, without them, uh, we would not have had this platform. Um, we also here, I would like to formally acknowledge again. I know I did it in the preamble, but it goes without saying that the symposium could not have happened without access to the Digital Strategy Fund, which was granted to us by the Canada Council for the Arts. Um, they are our primary funder, and we're so grateful to them for seeing, um, not only for seeing the potential of this event, but also for the grant officers who helped us work through how to make it stronger and how to create something that would have a more lasting impact. Um, the concept of the archive, for instance, came from the Digital Strategy mm -hmm. Fund uh, requirements, and it's turning out to be one of the most valuable and important things about this symposium. And so it's it's really true that the Canada Council um, not only funded, but also helped to shape some of the really quality aspects of our symposium. So thank you to them. And of course, our additional sponsors, again, a shout out to um, Ken, Michelle Cutler, and Simon Rossiter, who helps, and Ian Garrett, of course, who helps support the relationships with our, uh, with our sponsors. But we definitely could not have expanded the symposium to include the number of events and the number of artists that we were able to without the support of these um, additional fundraising. In fact, the symposium may not have been able to move forward at all without the generous support of all our funders here. So I'll mention them again. We have Ryerson University, Theatre Alberta, IATSE, CITT Alberta Section, School um, York University, Concordia University, and of course Toaster Lab. So without their um, support and care uh, for our community, the symposium would not have been possible. Thank you. Um, yeah, so here I've, I've listed out a couple of these were the sort of some foundational goals which inspired the Level Up Symposium. Um, and we have talked about a few of these. Um, but we'll talk a, a little bit briefly about a few more of these. Um, the concept of digital literacy and capacity for digital production is another one that comes from the Digital Strategy Fund at the Canada Council, but it really spoke to a primary value we had of being able to disseminate um, the wisdom from existing digital creators to theatre creators who are hoping to move into this platform and develop a relationship with digital production that they may not have had before. And so I think in a time of COVID, this creates a really beautiful bridge between people who have personal natural curiosity about these things and also artists who may come to it as a, you know, from a place of necessity. And I think that we, what we hoped was that the symposium could be a meeting ground for the, the sort of two niches within our community to meet and sort of cross contaminate in a way and, and hopefully build new relationships and new connections which would foster um, new work. Um, yeah, D Emily or Andrew, I want to toss to you, is, are there anything on this list you wanted to speak more to? Yeah, um, just actually kind of riffing off of what you just said, I think one of the really great things that started to happen early on in the symposium uh, was artists coming to us and saying like, I never would have had the opportunity to meet X artist or like, I'd just been looking up someone's website and then I was in a round table with them. Uh, and it brought a lot of joy to all of us that these connections were being formed. Um, people were talking who might not have had the chance to otherwise. And part of why we included the round tables at all was uh, to create those connections between the community and that sense when you go to a conference in person of being able to talk uh, after the main presentation and those meetings that you know we've all been been longing uh, to have. Um, oh, and Sorry. yeah, that uh, that really speaks uh, to like the third point on this, mm -hmm. which is actively bringing together collaborators from across the country and across uh, the world. You know, like earlier today. We had folks in the States. Uh, we had Mark Coniglio from Vienna. We had people across Canada um, all talking together. So a, a very international in audience and uh, slate of presenters. Um, and the, the concept of, you know, that was safe and without risk. And I think that really shines in our experiments. Mm -hmm. um, because the whole point of those was, you know, trying and not being afraid of failure and I think that every every group of experimentees uh, that makes it sound like we were experimenting on them we weren't uh, every group of experimenters uh, really embraced that idea of trying something out of your comfort zone trying something new just for the sake of, of trying and learning um, 
and I, I think that that's really great. Yeah, the emphasis here being on creative risk and not personal risk. So coming together, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many things in our life that are that are genuinely risky. If you have to go to the doctor, if you're caring for a loved one, we are put in a position now where at times we do have to put ourselves at risk or we have to assess personal risk um, with each and every project that we come to now in a way that we didn't have to, um, you know, a year ago. So being able to create a safe space, not only for artists to come together uh, without COVID risks, but also a safe space where people could share what they've been learning in an environment where um, we're really open to learning. We're open to being a beginner again. We're really all trying to come with beginner's mind and learn from those who know more, but not beat ourselves up for being at square one or square three when someone else is at square 56. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, trying to create a space where it's okay, even though we're experts in our field, in one way, it's a lot. We're allowed to be beginners in this other area and, and making room for that as artists, which is so foundational to mm -hmm. what the symposium is here for. Yeah, the, I think that, that that itself man manifested itself very well in the the round table discussions that we had, and that uh, they all had large groups of people getting together, talking about things that they not necessarily didn't have any experience with, but they just had thoughts about. And I think that that was really wonderful for community building and for just like feeling safe in of, of yourself that you can start talking about something that you maybe just have questions about and then you can learn from uh, other people who have questions about that and then being able to talk in small groups and as as a safe space but then come back to a larger group where everyone can share amongst their groups right i think that that was really uh present in a lot of what we we heard during those uh round tables so that was really great and the yeah. generosity in those spaces was just unbelievable. Yeah. Like it just was so heartwarming to see other artists coming together and really, um, really embodying that, you know, we had hopes for it, but of course it couldn't have, have happened that way if the artists themselves weren't willing to be open and be generous. So thank you so much to mm -hmm. each and every person who logged on for those round tables and live design experiments and for your generosity with one another. Sorry, Emily, I, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, speaking of questions, if anyone in the audience who's watching, uh, mm -hmm. we've talked about this a lot, like the feeling of speaking to the void, because uh, <laughs> we can't see any of you, but if anyone out there has any questions, please put them in the chat, whether it's about like us as artists or the symposium or our goals for the future, uh, we'd be happy, happy to answer anything. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of outcomes and things that people had, um, these are some outcomes that attendees have shared with us or that we have felt through our own experiences within the symposium. Um, we really felt that community building was a primary goal, as we've already said, and I did feel that it happened. Even for myself, I had an opportunity to speak with some artists who I've a long time uh, been, an, been an admirer of, or even mm -hmm. artists who I worked with but haven't talked to or worked with in five or six years, getting to reconnect. Um, so being able to draw, uh, you know, redraw those existing lines between myself and other artists or to create new ones was really exciting. And I did feel for myself as an artist, an expansion of my, not only my network of, you know, people I have a personal relationship with, but also my network of fellow artists who are going through their own growth curve. So um, that was a really important one for me. Mm -hmm. hey, Andrew, how about you? Yeah, no, that was um, even, even as uh, curators, right? That, that there was a certain, there was there were names that came up in conversation early on that people were saying when we talked to certain artists that we were going to be bringing on who said oh well maybe you should talk to uh this person the certain individuals that I'd, I'd never met or heard of before and so those connections right for even for us were quite interesting uh and unexpected yeah so. big shout out here to rachel forbes and joanna mm -hmm. Yu on the board of directors who also had a couple meetings with us and spoke to us about some different artists in their communities and just in their own personal networks um that we would not have known um you know sort of across generations and across um the country and around the world so we've been really lucky to uh, to get to interface directly with some really exciting artists mm -hmm. um yeah we also heard from a, a number of artists that through roundtables or through other um, processes within the symposium that artist connections have been formed, which have actually resulted in some grant writing has been taking place, some future mm -hmm. projects have been happening, some jam sessions. Um, so just as a result of having attended a session, they were able to you know, make a connection with someone, um, light an artistic spark and get a little fire going. So I'm really hoping that we'll see in the months and years to come that there's you know some, um, some little artistic uh, outputs will, or even big ones, will hopefully come from the the connections that were that artists were able to form themselves within this context. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we've also heard from a few people, um, both when, you know, folks ask about where the, when the archive's available for individual events or where can they access things. Um, but people have said that they're going to refer to some of these talks for mm -hmm. like years to come. And that's uh, really rewarding to hear that the things that are being discussed uh, will be points of reference uh, going forward in the future. Yeah, and then from an ADC perspective, this has been a venue by which we can really express our care and dedication to our extended family of theater makers. So um, I think the designers within our membership and non-member designers as well have been feeling, you know, our care and our stewardship throughout the COVID-19 crisis. They've been able to see updates on our advocacy, the work we've been doing with IATSE. Um, but for the producers out there, the playwrights, the directors, the other people who are within our theater uh, community across the country, um, that this symposium has been a way for us to expand the borders beyond just the designers who are our members or even the non-member designers who are trying to support um, with our advocacy work, but to really promote ways in which visual dramaturgy or, um, or sound design, you know, that these things can contribute to a new performance modality and that we want the, to be in conversation with all the members of our theater community. So this has been a really important platform. I know um, me and Ken and Simon have had a number of conversations about how much it means to us to be able to have a place to share, um, sh you know, share space and to create an open space where people from different backgrounds within the theater community can all be in dialogue with one another. Um, so that's been a really um, exciting way that ADC has been able to meet some of our goals um, through this symposium well and yeah, I was just going to say, not even just the theatre community, right? Like, mm -hmm. we've had people coming from different artistic milieus, which has been, you know, really exciting, both in terms of perspectives that they bring and the fact that the amount of reach that mm -hmm. uh, this has had, you know, in part, again, to our really fabulous social media team. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Speaking of reach, let's talk about the symposium in numbers. Uh, we won't go through every single one of these, but maybe each of us can pick our favourite one. Uh, we'll leave them up here while we're talking so uh, everyone can get a chance to take a look at them. Um, uh, are you sure you don't want to just read them? Let's I just mean, read we them. could go through them. Okay, so um, <laughs> zero is the cost of attending any and all events at the symposium. Free. And it will also be the cost of uh, accessing the archive. It's free. And that is because of the support we got from Canada Council and our, uh, and our funders, uh, additional funders. So thank you so much. Um, that brings me to number one. What One grant is uh, what we received from the Digital Strategy Fund, which empowered the ADC to present this symposium. So thank you to the Canada Council uh, Digital Strategy Fund. Uh, two, Collaborative Organizations, uh, Associated Designers of Canada is obviously the progenitor of and presenter of this symposium, but also Toaster Labs Mixed Reality Performance Atelier uh, was critical in the development of this project and its success moving forward. Anybody else okay. want to pick it up there? Three. Three co-curators. Uh, that's us. Uh, uh, that's us. <laughs> We're all here. Uh, <laughs> we have four weeks of events, even though we originally intended only to have one. Here we are. <laughs> four weeks later. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, five workshop instructors. We have, skipping a number, seven valued <laughs> sponsors uh, enabling us to support and expand the symposium and ensure free access for all. Eight live digital presentations promoted through Level Up website listings, and nine weeks to prepare the symposium from the receipt <laughs> of funding. Ah, That's yeah. a nerve-wracking number. That's a, That's, that's a yeah. very small number in the end, but there you go. <laughs> 10 was the number of hardworking member volunteers promoting and coordinating the symposium behind the scenes. So aside from the three of us and Toaster Lab, Beyond that, we had 10 additional people devoting a huge amount of their care and expertise and skill and time. So thank you so much to our hardworking volunteers. Uh, 11 is the number of works we were able to put up in our digital art gallery. If you haven't checked out the digital art gallery yet, please do. I, every time I look at it, it just fills me with inspiration and excitement. And there's such a wide range um, of work in there, which I think really speaks to uh, the heart of what Symposium is. And 14 was the number of attendees at our most intimate event. So at our smallest <laughs> and most intimate event, we had uh, just a 14, 14 mm -hmm. people. And that was, I believe, for one of our round tables. And it was great. It was a wonderful conversation. So uh, I think I, I included that in our symposium and numbers list because it's important to note that when we're thinking about the symposium and numbers, it's not always the big numbers that are the most valuable. Um, sometimes those small intimate events uh, can have a huge influence on people and their their artistic lives and their careers, so. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we had uh, 23 days packed with programming. Originally 20, and then we just kept adding more because we <laughs> wanted to do more things if we weren't already doing enough. Uh, 40 events, uh, including workshops, roundtables, project presentations, panel discussions, and live design experiments uh, presented live during the past four weeks and available for free permanently via the Level Up archive. Uh, 52, sorry, Emily, you go ahead. <laughs> I just okay. talked right over you. Uh, 52 on average attendance with 52% higher than initial registration numbers. So for uh, mainly our streams, uh, we can take a look at how many unique visitors we have and how many people signed up beforehand. So lots of people tuning in. 55 artist presenters sharing their valuable time, wisdom, and generosity with our community and beyond. And then 397, uh, that is the number of attendees uh, on our most highly attended uh, single event, which is one of our streams. And we had 638 unique individual people who signed up for symposium events from across the world. Um, that number really surprised us and we were really grateful and excited to see that the reach uh, was so large. Uh, for context, the ADC, uh, has estimated that number of full-time theater designers in the country is, hovers between three and 400. Um, so the fact that we had 638 really speaks to that broader community of outreach that we're really reaching not only people throughout the theater community, but as Emily said, from other sectors as well. So we're really grateful for that. Um, sorry, I, I momentarily got distracted, which... <laughs> I'm going to steal it. We're at 3,568 <laughs> free tickets were issued for symposium events. So these are all of our individual signups. That number is also pretty mind blowing. Um, Andrew, you can take the last one. Uh, $33,000 $33, is the amount that we invested in self-employed artists who contributed to the symposium. So that's pretty amazing. Especially, especially now when when a lot of people are not working, so which right. is like pretty much primarily our grant and our sponsors. So thank you again to the Canada Council and all of our sponsors because we were basically to take able to take the money from them and give it uh, directly to artists into the hands of artists. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, yes. the re so the reason I got distracted and I want to I want to say this because this is this because <laughs> it was a number that I forgot that we should have put into this. But the our our level up website. Uh, has had uh, seven point one thousand unique views, so unique people to the website. So I think that that's uh, that is the reach of people coming to uh, check us out. Amazing, um, and I know already just from speaking anecdotally with my colleagues that many many people uh, who signed up for events or or found out events too late have already accessed the archive, and we do have some analytics mm -hmm. on the fact that the archive is already getting a lot of traffic. So for all you artists uh, joining us today who are part of this symposium, please know that the work that you've graciously allowed us to make available on the archive, um, that your intellectual property and your ideas and, and spirit that you're allowing to be part of our permanent archive, that that is already being accessed by others um, and people are already receiving benefit from it. So that's really meaningful for all of us. Um, speaking of the archive, um, all events will be available for free in the symposium archive, uh, enabling you to catch anything you've missed or to share anything you find valuable or relevant with future students, collaborators, producers, and fellow artists. I already know there's a number of events here in the symposium that I'm going to be um, making use of whenever I'm teaching in the future around the ideas of um, visual and auditory dramaturgy. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and important to note for anyone who was at the round table that just like I told you on those days and those events, that round table events, um, those private conversations in the breakout rooms will never be published. Um, it will be summarized to protect the private nature of those conversations, but also will enable um, future inquiring minds to benefit from the valuable conclusions or questions um, happened upon by the participants. So we'll have um, brief summaries um, of the work that, uh, or the conclusions that were drawn through those conversations. And many times those conclusions were simply, we don't know the answer, but we think this is the question. Um, and knowing what the question is can be as valuable as knowing what the answer is, so. Yeah, and if I could just add on for a sec, something that we're gonna be adding related to the archive that we haven't quite gotten to yet, 
but hopefully in the next day or so, is a tools section. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been getting a lot of emails of people asking what we use for this or what was mentioned and that. So we're going to be adding a section to the website where we list all the tools that we as a team have used in the symposium, but also as uh, conversations have happened and presenters have recommended using different pieces of software. That's all going to be up there um, so that hopefully people are able to uh, continue their their learning and uh, not have to try and remember what, uh, what software was mentioned at one talk uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah, absolutely. The, the amount of dissemination of information just about tools has been incredible. And we've had a lot of questions about that in our chat. And if you have questions about tools you missed or questions you have about um, the tech side of things, please pop them in the chat now. Emily can also um, address them. And anything we hear from anyone attending helps us to uh, be informed about what we should include in that archive moving forward. Mm -hmm. And finally, thank you so much to all of our artists. Um, we have I had to have three pages to get all these um, artists on here. Um, our collaborator, our, our technical collaborator, uh, Patrick, created this slideshow for us. Um, so we'll just pan through. I'm just going back again. So these are all the artists who made the symposium possible. And without their contribution, um, we you would have just been staring at our little talking heads, which mm -hmm. would have been very no one wants that. No, that's, yeah, no, no for four that. weeks, just us. <laughs> <laughs> these are all all amazing, amazing creators. All very, very unique, very wonderful people. And so, uh, yeah, thank you everyone that was a part of this. You were all really great. Yeah, we were joking a few times throughout the symposium that it it felt almost selfish to get this amount of amazing mm. people together because even just being... I've, I've been on almost every stream uh, behind the scenes making the things happen. Uh, so I've watched all of our presentations and it just felt like... Did we just program all these people so I could have a great time for a month <laughs> watching this? Obviously not, but it uh, it's really, it cannot be overstated how much the team of, of artists that, that came out uh, really, really worked to create an amazing symposium. So I think that's kind of the end of our formal presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, please pop them in the chat. If you have any comments, that's good too. It's all fair game. Um, we we do have a question from Connor, question. <laughs> uh, which is, when will the next symposium occur? Uh, thank you for that question, Con Connor. Uh, does anyone else want to take it away? <laughs> um, yeah. Not no. right now. Uh, yeah. But I mean, I we've been taught it, it's one of those things where we kind of go back and forth in terms of like, sometimes it's exhausting to think about uh, just immediately getting back into the planning stage. But also we do have a document on our drive labeled things to know for next time. So I can't give you a date of when that is. But I think that we're all at least interested because otherwise we wouldn't be bothering to log what we think we should do differently next time. Mm hmm. Yeah, let's do it yeah. next year. Let's go. Perfect. <laughs> let's do it. Let's just um, do it. The ADC, as part of our National Arts Service Organization mandate, um, we do have a mandate to promote the um, the art form of design for the theater and for live performance. And so um, the foundational values that have driven the symposium do come from a mandate that's within the ADC's NASO uh, designation and is very important to us. And, and I know that many people on the board have um, powerful and meaningful ideas about how we can move forward from the momentum created here with the symposium. So um, this is definitely not uh, the first and last. We know that we, we want to take the energy and the um, foundational tools that Emily and Andrew have provided us with in this initial symposium, and as well as Ian Garrett and his knowledge from um, the Toaster Lab symposia that they've been running, and that this is uh, just a, a sort of a first, a first output. But we're hoping that we can continue to promote the art of digital dramaturgy and design, the art of dramaturgy of visual and auditory and all other forms of design within live performance in many different contexts. And this is, uh, you know, meaningful and foundational to the ADC's NASO mandate, and that we are. Are planning to continue this work into the future. Um, so this has been a bit of a proof of concept. Um, you know, is there a is there a, a, an appetite for this? Do people want this kind of connection? Is this 
uh, telepresence meaningful for people? And is this a way in which we can truly um, expand our our uh, reach as a as an association? And I think it's been an overwhelming yes has been the answer to all those questions that mm -hmm. each and every person who's logged on has been telling the ADC, this is meaningful for me, this is helping me in some capacity. And that allows us to uh, make decisions moving forward about how we can support our community, our direct communi community of members, um, you know, the next circle of non-member designers, and then the larger circle of live performance creators around the world and across the country. So, mm -hmm. thank you, Connor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, I, I'd wanted I'd wanted to mention earlier, but I never did. This uh, again, it's a super selfish personal thing. Besides how how important that <laughs> is, but um, allowed. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> but uh, as as a as a designer and a creator, that all the the ideas that have come out mm. of the symposium, uh, I think uh, Emily and I work together a lot. So we we were we were working on another show and um, had a meeting last week. And I think during that meeting, there was probably about four or five ideas that came out of that particular meeting that I was like, yeah, we oh, like yeah, pulled up the, the archive. And uh, I was like, and this was also showing... from the symposium. Yeah. So there were just all, all like ideas that were like, hey, all of these creators and these artists that we brought together, your ideas are all really great. Now we're going to steal them. So thank you for, <laughs> for putting them out there <laughs> and sharing them with us because you're, they're all great. And that's what we're um... all here to do, right? So thank you. This has been, this has been really lovely. So. Yeah, that being said, of course, we have a, a true um, care and regard for the intellectual property of everything that goes into the archive. Yeah. And it's really foundational to us that all artists feel supported. <laughs> but yes, I mean, what you're saying is right. And the best idea moves It was a joke. It was, was well received as a joke. I loved it. it um, but just to say that, yeah. I'm not going to no, steal I, their exact ideas. No, but I think it's true that the but, conversation that we have and that also that what can be, you know, someone's idea about their project or, you know, we hear someone present about a particular thing they've done in the past and it makes us curious. It makes us excited mm -hmm, as artists. Mm -hmm, it makes us mm -hmm. think, wow, I never would have looked into that. Okay, I'm going to do my own research or, oh. you know, today the conversation about AI got me thinking, you know, I, I've, these are some areas of the symposium that I myself have resisted for years and thought, ah, that's not yeah. that interesting to me. And suddenly it's presented by, you know, a, a peer, a member of my community or someone I already admire for another reason. Suddenly it gets me thinking, maybe I was wrong about that. Maybe I should revisit that idea and, and you know, do some research and, and go down a little bit of a different rabbit hole than I would normally um, find myself looking into. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, this is really exciting for all of us. Yeah, like so, so inspiring. Like I, one, that, mm -hmm. one presentation that really stuck out in, in my mind was the... Um, uh, the I am Alan Turing demo because I had been working on a project for a while where I was like oh, I kind of want to like run a script through like a machine learning algorithm and see where it goes but like I don't know I don't really have the time to like get into any of those um, like GPT-2 or anything and then watching watching that demo I was like no I have time this <laughs> we'll just carve out a little, a little chunk um <laughs> Because it, you know, it's it's something where you know you see someone present using this really innovative tool, or or creating work that uh, really does work. Um, so it it's quite inspirational. Um, and you know the things that people say, like the comments that people have been adding to the chat as participants have been. Uh, um, watching you know people have been posting their own links to to shows and pieces and like just i think that there's just been so much learning and sharing and it, it's great it really encourages me to think about that idea of simultaneous invention that we know mm. from history you know oh there's different scientists who didn't have access to each other who were discovering the same thing um i i felt like the symposium has given a lot of us opportunities windows into one another's um, little COVID realities through these little green lights that we stare at in mm -hmm. our computers and, and are reminded us that we're not the only one with this curiosity or we're not the only one exploring mm -hmm. this and yeah. giving us access to some energy that we might have been, you know, maybe our, maybe we were missing or, or maybe we were flagging a bit in our stamina. Um, so I hope that those paying attention uh, out there and watching and tuning in are feeling that positive energy and feeling that um, sense of community and being in communion with us. Um, cause we know, I know that for all three of us, we've after every session just been filled with positive energy mm -hmm. and joy. So I hope that some of that joy is, um, is reaching all of you too. Yeah. That we're not just joy vampires. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. didn't make this for ourselves. We made this for all of you. It's not for us. <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely uh, not. <laughs> 
Uh, great. Do we have um, any more questions? I know we just have a few more minutes before our hour is up, and and I'm sure everyone's tired of us droning on. Yeah, we don't have any. We don't have any more questions, but it does take a hot moment after we ask before, as as we all know, it's about thirty seconds to get to the get to the peoples. Um, so I'm just gonna add super quick for drinks with designers tonight. If you are like, where is my link? It is coming. It will be to you soon. Um, and uh, I know normally we get the links out the night before, but we needed a bit more time to work on this one. Which also means that if you have not yet registered but have decided you want to attend, that you should do so right away, um, and then you'll be able to get that link as soon as it goes out. Yeah, I'm you can really register. Register right up until the event. Um, awesome. So I hope everyone who's watching uh, considers coming out and chatting with us. We'd love to hear your feedback. And also, I hope that you'll take a moment after the symposium ends, even if it's a few weeks from now or months from now or any time, to send us an email. Let us know how the symposium has supported you or things we did wrong. We're really interested in what we didn't get right this time. We mm -hmm. want to make an effort to, um, to improve. And as I said, we're planning to do more events like this and support our community in more ways um, with telepresence and other kinds of online platforms. So if there was a, you know, particularly something that influenced your access to these events or influenced your feeling of safe in these spaces, um, that we're really uh, ask with humbleness that you would share them with us because we're really interested and open to hearing any feedback from you. Um, you can uh, email us at levelup@designers.ca. Or if you prefer to contact uh, someone else on the board, as opposed to speaking directly with us as co-curators, please feel free to check out the designers.ca, which is our ADC website. And you can contact uh, anyone on the ADC board um, with your thoughts or feedback, positive or negative. Um, we're really interested to hear from you about how we can make this better in the future. And also about what topics you may wanna see covered in future symposia. If there's something that you feel really motivated by and really wanna see the conversation happening on a broader scale, then please share that with us and we can use that in conversation, um, broader conversations um, at the organizational level to consider what we should do next. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's definitely an idea that came up many times. And I feel like I, uh, a lot of times when I was having the, uh, uh, doing the panel discussions or the, the presentations that I would always ask, like, what is something that you've done that uh, did not work and you will never do again? And uh, that, that always got really great answers from whoever it was. So I think that we as curators in this team are very open to uh, criticism. <laughs> <laughs> we want the notes. Just give us notes, and give us we'll, notes. We'll, we'll, we can take we'll, a note. We'll make, we, we, we're really good at taking notes, so just give them more of those, and we'll uh, we'll learn and do it better next time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think that about wraps it up for us. Andrew, did you want to take it away? Yeah. Last time I get to uh, do this. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming out. This has been the Level Up Symposium. We only have our one last event tonight, as you've just heard repeatedly. Uh, so that's at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern or uh, 6 p.m. Pacific. So thank you so much. Drinks with Designers, come on out. And uh, of course, donate to the ADC if you can on any of our viewing platforms, on the designers.ca website, or on canadahelps.org. Thank you so much. You're all lovely. Uh, take care. See you around.